Since material science is a field or a discipline that relates structure to properties, sometimes it's going to be necessary to relate it to even aspects of the individual crystal structure as we try and relate that to properties. That means it would be really helpful if I had a way to differentiate um, this atom from that atom. How do I talk about those? Well, we need a way to point out positions in the lattice. Here's how we do it. We use it with what's called Miller indices. Okay. The first thing we do is we pick an origin. So we select an origin right there. Now we give it our axes, in the x, the y, and the z directions. x, y, z. Sometimes you'll see those labeled a, b, and c. That's fine. Then all we have to do is figure out where the atom lies in this new Cartesian coordinate system that we have. For example, if we're talking about this atom right there, well, that one's on the front face, so we're going to come all the way forward in the x direction. We're going to move over by half a unit cell in the y and up by half a unit cell in the z. Therefore, this thing gets round brackets with commas, and it's going to be 1, comma, 1 half, comma, 1 half. That would be the Miller indices for that, that position in the unit cell. What if we wanted to do this position up here? All right, that's only half the way forward in the x direction. It is half the way in the y direction, and it is 1 in the z direction. Pretty straightforward. All right, so that's positions. Round brackets, use commas. And you can leave things as fractions. You need to leave them as fractions. What about directions? Well, one way to do directions would be to simply take the final position and subtract from it the initial position. So let's say we're in this example we just did, and we wanted to do that direction from that point to that point, right? That direction. We could take the final point, right? This was our uh, this was our final point. This was our initial point. So we could just subtract them from one another. And then you put it in square brackets with no commas. So let's go ahead and do that. For this one, that direction that we just drew there, it's going to be 1 minus 1 half. So we're going to do square brackets, 1 half and then it's going to be 1 half minus 1 half, 0, and then 1 half minus 1, so it's going to be negative 1 half. Right? Then the last thing you do is you multiply or divide by some common factor in order to get your smallest integers. So for this one, if we multiply it all by 2, then we will end up with 1, 0, 1 bar. What is that bar I just did? Why did I write the negative on top of it? That's just convention. It's common to write the negative on top of the number, but it's the same as saying negative 1, so 1, 0, 1 bar. Now, what about this? What about families of equivalent directions that are grouped, right? So if we want to talk about not just one direction, but all directions in the crystal that are crystallographically identical. So for example, in this drawing here, what things are identical? How about this one? This direction right there that cuts across the face diagonal should be in the same family as this one that cuts across the face diagonal, as this one that cuts across the face diagonal, right? Those should all be in the same family. So what do we do about those? The ones that are in the same family, we write them with pointed brackets out the side, right? So you'd pick the direction of one of those, like this one. What does this one do? Well, it moves forward one in the x direction, one in the y direction, and nothing in the z. So this direction right there, that is the 1, 1, 0 direction. Notice, I didn't do final minus initial. It's also possible just to look at how far it travels in each of the three directions. Let's do this one over here. This one goes backwards 1 in the x direction. It doesn't move in the y direction. And it goes 1 down in the z direction, this one right here. So it would be 1 bar, 0, 1 bar, right? Now, what do you notice about these two um, directions here? They're in the same family. We've just done a permutation of the numbers, right? Therefore, we could write it like this. We could write everything in the 110 family. Well, what do we mean? We're meaning all positive and negative permutations of that number. So the specific directions might include 1, 1, 0, the actual direction, but also it could include 1, 0, 1. It could also include 0, 1, 1. 
but it, now it can also include negatives. So it could include one bar, one zero. All right, you can see that in the one one zero family exist all 12 of these directions. That family contains 12 members, right? And including the two that we did here, right? All the faces could be added up into there, right? So how about in a cubic system, what other directions are equivalent to the 001? So what is the 001 direction? Could you draw it here? The 001 direction would be, um, well, it would be the one that travels nothing in the X, nothing in the Y, but one in the Z. So it's going to be the one that goes straight up here. That would be the 001 direction. So other ones in that same family would be any of these edge lengths. Any of these edge lengths would be in that family, right? And we could write them all out in the same way that we did for the 110 family of planes or directions, okay? So that is how you do points and directions as well as families of directions using Miller indices. This turns out to be pretty valuable.